Hey guys, this video is going to be a lot more technical than my usual videos. I'll be going into more of the developments in this log. I'm sharing some of the challenges I've been facing, as well as some of the solutions I came up with. Now, I'm no game development wizard by any means. So feel free to tell me how you would have solved some of these problems. Having good code structure is one of the most important pillars of game development. One commonly used coding structure or paradigm is inheritance. I know not what you get from your parents after they die. I'm talking about object-oriented programming. OLP is a really good coding paradigm, but there are some cases where it just kind of falls on its face. For example, let's say I'm making a game about Titans. Yes, from that anime. Inheritance will have you make some kind of base Titan class that's meant to describe all the abilities of a Titan. Eating, moving, dying. But Titans in the anime spawn in different shapes, sizes, and speeds. So you'd have to add some randomized function that's called when a Titan is born. This function determines the speed, size, and deformity of the Titan. Now let's say you want to make a Titan that moves a little different. You can just manipulate the movement values in the script and you've effectively just made a new Titan variation. But what if you want to add a new set of Titans that, let's say, don't spawn with random stats? A set of Titans that have a fixed appearance, size, and speed. Well, that was something because it kind of goes against one of the key attributes of the base Titan. Now, one way to make this Titan would be to override this function and just hard code your own values. But if we just look at the amount of convention breaking, behaviors we're going to add just for these new titans. It's just be better to make another abstraction of the base titan class. Let's make a new class called pure titan and just move the randomized function there. And now the special titan is just inherit from base titan. But this would mean that all existing scripts that inherited from base titan would now need to inherit from pure titan or else it won't be randomized. Now you can imagine just how frustrating that would be if you had more variations of that class. And that's one of the drawbacks of OOP. With every class you create, you're kind of writing yourself into a corner. Because any variation that goes against the convention of the class would usually require you to have to make another abstraction. Now, no coding paradigm is without limitations. And this is probably where you'd have to implement some kind of coding pattern to iron things out. Now, one coding pattern that would work perfectly for this use case is composition. <clears throat> Let's say I'm making a game about titans. Composition would have you abstract your code into self-contained components. These components can then be used interchangeably to make some kind of grotesque titan build a bear. The flexibility that composition provides just seems like a more logical approach moving forward. So the rest of this video is going to be me describing how I refactored abandoned code. Code that came from a less educated version of myself. Code so scary I wouldn't touch with a 10 feet stick just out of pure fear. Allow me to describe just how bad it was and tell me if it sounds anything like your current project. So upon visiting the code I wrote two years ago, I couldn't help but notice the stench of vomit. It was spaghetti, code spaghetti. Like I, I wouldn't piss on it if it was on fire. So I had this player class, which inherits from another class called entity which contains code for movement and entering vehicles. Basically abilities that I wanted the player and non-playable characters to have in common. The player would then inherit from that and then listen to user inputs and manipulate values for movement. Which worked for the most part. Now because I hadn't designed NPCs yet, I decided to just add literally any mechanic I could think of directly to the player scripts. Mechanics like the inventory system, the ability to pick up and throw items, the ability to leave the plane midair, and so on. This made the scripts incredibly long and difficult to debug. And apart from that, these are also abilities that I now want the NPCs to also have, and I never really considered how I was going to move it to the entity class. Hence why I just decided to abandon the project. Until now. So I decided to break down the different attributes of the player into self-contained components. 
In this video, I'll only go into details on the behavior tree components because it's kind of the best at describing composition. And there are also some really cool features I want to talk about. Now, behavior trees in video games use the state machine code pattern, which kind of just describes what the object is doing at any given time. For my game, I created two classes, behavior and behavior tree. So I added the behavior tree to the player, which basically acts like a remote control. Then I gave it the default behavior idle. Now when the player changes their horizontal direction by pressing the forward button, this behavior will tell the behavior tree that hey, I, I, I want to run now, essentially telling the behavior tree to change to the run behavior. Now the behavior tree will first check if that behavior is in the tree, which in this case it is not. So then behavior tree will now be like, huh? Who's run? And then switch back to the default behavior, which is set to idle. That's why nothing is happening as I'm pressing the forward button right now. Now if I add the run behavior to the tree, the behavior tree will find the behavior and then switch to it. And if I stop pressing the forward button, it will go back to the idle behavior. And that's basically how everything operates. Now if I press the jump button... Oh wait. Let me just add the jump and fall behaviors. And that's essentially the basic scaffolding for movements. For performance reasons, only the active behavior is updated. And with this system, I've made the player script 10 times more readable. And I can literally just take this behavior tree and add it to NPCs and I'm ready to add them to the game. But now onto another dilemma. Say I want the player to get into this plane right here. And I don't want the player changing behaviors while this interaction is going on. So I guess I'll make it this behavior in the behavior tree but here's the thing let's just say i want the player to be able to do a lot of things to this plane now the special thing about behavior trees is that they actually inherit from behavior so they can actually function as a behavior in a tree this allows me to do stuff like nested states wait a minute i thought you said inheritance was a bad thing you're just meant to prefer composition not completely abandon the idea of inheritance altogether now this behavior is going to have some behaviors under it, like one where the player is just in the plane. And this free fall state is basically like the rendezvous from Battlefield. When the character leaves the plane midair, I want the player to kind of find their way back to the plane. Now the reason why this is under the piloting behavior and not just its own separate state is because when the player actually leaves the plane, they exit the pilot's behavior. They lose the ability to be able to talk to or control the plane. But in this freefall behavior, I want to be able to move the plane towards the player slightly. And the piloting behavior just so happens to hold a reference to both the plane and the player. So I can easily just write code to do that in the piloting script. Now, another dilemma is that when the player changes states, other components in the scene are meant to react to that, like the camera and this label. But the player isn't always in the main scene, and sometimes the plane isn't always in the main scene, but they need to talk to each other. So, in order to solve this problem, I implemented the message bus code pattern, which is basically in combination of the observer pattern and the singleton pattern, but, but this video is getting too long, so. Basically, I have a singleton contains a list of signals that can be connected to and emitted from any script in the entire game. The camera and the plane both have their own behavior trees. And this is what all the behavior trees working together looks like. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully you guys like the longer videos, more longer videos to come. And I have 
a lot of other ideas to showcase so subscribe for that